I noticed this strange looking device on a country lane in the middle of nowhere recently. Closer inspection revealed what appeared to be a microphone on top of a pole. Some digging and research took me to other similar setups. When I arrived at each, I noticed that some have weather monitoring equipment on them. Some are accessible, others not so. Many are located at schools, and since a grown man hanging around a school with a camera can be fraught with ambiguity, I decided to stick to the microphones located elsewhere. It soon became clear that they're monitoring something. Mapping them out revealed that it's obviously Manchester Airport. A bit more research allowed me to monitor these microphones in real time and see the local sound levels when an aircraft passes by. Manchester Airport takes noise complaints extremely seriously. It's required to publish a noise action plan every five years in order to minimise unnecessary noise. The airport noise monitoring system monitors and reports on noise from aircraft and checks and records the path of every aircraft arriving or taking off from Manchester Airport. There are 15 of these monitoring stations in total situated around the airport, both close to and away from it. They constantly record noise levels at all locations from arriving and departing aircraft so that if one is too loud or someone files a noise complaint with the airport, they can immediately investigate. They consist of a microphone at the top of a short mast and a noise monitoring device further down. They're nothing new either. Manchester Airport installed its first noise monitoring station back in 1983. It's not clear when all the stations were installed, but Cheadle School went live in 2000, Parkgate in Nutsford and Broad Oak Farm in Mobberley went live in 2001, Daisy Bank Lane in Cheadle was installed in 2015, Benshill Community Centre in Withinshaw in 2016, Bramall Cricket Club in 2020 and Plumley Village Hall in 2021. The monitoring stations sit on purpose-built concrete plinths, with conduits for power and a telephone line to enter from underneath. Each station is supposed to be enclosed by a fence to keep it secure. Some are metal enclosures with heavily locked gates, others are horse-eaten wooden fences. Some have no fence at all, and some don't need them. Inside the fence is a 6 metre galvanised steel hinged mast. The hinge is either at the base or a midpoint to allow access for maintenance, calibration and repairs. Mere Parish Club is on a pole on a wall bracket. On the masts are a microphone, data cabinet, sometimes an electrical box and sometimes weather monitoring equipment. The microphone is a Grass 41AM or similar which is made for permanent outdoor installation, for example in an airport noise monitoring system such as Manchester's. Some are fitted with anti-bird spikes, some aren't. They have a windscreen and rain caps which don't affect their acoustic omnidirectional characteristics. The microphone cable goes down inside of the mast. Also near the top is a lightning conductor, often where the mast is the tallest structure nearby. Others don't need them. The brain behind the whole system is in a box further down the mast. It appears that a couple of different models are in use, but most contain a Bruel and Care noise monitoring terminal plus. They're used to monitor aircraft, road, city, train and industrial noise, and they can be integrated with sound recorders, weather stations and cameras. Power and telephone cables are brought up from the ground below, and the stations can send back data over radio links or via cable. Some sites have weather monitoring equipment installed and others don't. There's no radio link or visible telemetry being sent over the air, so it's likely the data is being sent over the telephone line. Whether this is a copper line or a fibre line isn't clear. Some sites are slightly different, such as Stopford House in Stockport, where the monitoring cabinet is inside the roof space and the microphone is outside on the roof. Let's look at how and where noise is created and how it's minimised and take a more detailed look at these stations. The long-term aim of Manchester and all airports is to limit and reduce where possible the number of people affected by noise because of the airport's operation and development. Noise is inevitable, but there are always evolving plans in place to aim to reduce it from both airports and the industry, such as introducing quieter aircraft and modifying current aircraft to make them quieter. Land around airports is controlled so that schools and hospitals and other premises that contain people that are vulnerable to noise aren't built close to the source of the noise. 
the airport can implement quieter descents and climb outs as well as alternative routing and of course set stricter restrictions at night. To incentivise the use of quieter aircraft and flights at less sensitive times of the day, Manchester charges fees to airlines that vary according to the noise certification of the aircraft they operate. Airlines pay more for aircraft certified to older, noisier standards than they do for aircraft which meet newer, quieter standards. Aircraft operating at night between 2300 and 0600 pay a premium compared to those during the day. At Manchester Airport, the two runways are arranged in parallel, roughly one-eighth of a mile apart, and offset by one mile. Their intention is to continue to minimise operations on both runways at the same time. Each year they review opportunities to use just runway 1, apart from when such use would be contrary to safety, air traffic and weather requirements. Departing aircraft normally take off into the wind, however if there are clear benefits to departing in a particular direction, a limited amount of wind from behind may be acceptable. By specifying their preferred runway direction as westerly, when aircraft come into land from the east and take off to the west, they can further reduce the number of departing aircraft that fly over more densely populated areas to the north and east of the airport. The main noise sources are from landing aircraft, aircraft on the ground and departing aircraft obviously. Noise from arriving aircraft is mainly generated by air flowing over the structure of the aeroplane. This is because the engines are normally operating at low thrust settings during this stage of flight. Aircraft noise is more audible the lower the aeroplane flies and the closer it gets to the airport. Noise also increases as the pilot lowers the landing gear and flaps in readiness for landing. The primary method of minimising noise impacts of arriving aircraft is through a technique known as Continuous Descent Arrival or CDA, sometimes referred to as Continuous Descent Operations or CDOs. CDAs require air traffic controllers to work closely with pilots, providing accurate information about the distance to touchdown. This allows aircraft to remain higher for longer, reducing the need for engine thrust associated with periods of level flight. CDAs have been shown to reduce arrival noise by up to 5 dB. Low power, low drag approaches involve maintaining a streamlined aircraft configuration, one that generates less engine and airframe noise for as long as possible. To do this, pilots delay lowering the landing gear and deploying flaps until the aircraft gets closer to touchdown, closer to the point where the aircraft must be fully configured for landing. ILS approaches are controlled too. The point at which an aircraft intercepts the ILS is known as the joining point. To reduce noise disturbance from aircraft using the ILS to approach the airport, Manchester requires pilots to remain at an altitude of at least 2,000 feet when they join the ILS glide path. Noise can be controlled on the ground too. One of the ways to slow an aircraft down immediately after landing is by using reverse thrust. This is where the thrust from the engines is directed forwards producing a braking action. To try to keep the disturbance to a minimum, Manchester discourages the use of reverse thrust, particularly at night. There are times when conditions allow an aircraft to turn off an engine to reduce the thrust used while taxiing to and from the runway. This procedure is known as a reduced engine taxi, or RET, and is already in common use at Manchester Airport, reducing noise and emissions. An alternative to using APUs is to use fixed electrical ground power, or FEGP, or ground power units, or GPUs. GPUs and FEGP provide electrical power to aircraft systems, enabling them to shut down their main engines and their APUs. Of course the most noise is created when aircraft depart. A noise preferential route or NPR is one that directs an aircraft along an agreed route to avoid areas of population. They're sometimes referred to as preferred noise routes or PNRs. At Manchester Airport there are NPRs from each end of each runway. To encourage airlines to fly as quietly as possible the airport operates a noisy aircraft penalty scheme. Using the noise monitoring system, they measure the level of noise generated by each departing aircraft. Noise is measured by monitors positioned at fixed points beneath the departure flight paths. Noisy aircraft surcharges are levied against the operators of aircraft that exceed the published noise limits. The ideal positioning of noise monitors is at a distance of 6.5 km from the start of the takeoff roll in accordance with the ICAO certification standards. In practice, noise monitors can not always be placed at exactly 6.5 kilometers as required. 
Currently at Manchester, noisy aircraft penalties are levied at £768 for an infringement of up to 1 dBA, followed by an additional £153.60 for each decibel thereafter. Money raised from noisy aircraft penalties is passed to the Manchester Airport Community Trust Fund. So, if you've noticed these microphones dotted around your area, the chances are they're monitoring sound levels from your local airport. Thank you.